Good morning and welcome to Fairlawn Avenue United Church on this Sunday in the season of Easter. It's good to gather and I'm glad you're here to share in this Sabbath pause in our days. Time to reflect, time to breathe, time to just be together. Alongside this portion of worship, Eleanor Daly has provided us with a music bulletin with music clips and notes to add to our experience. This morning was to have been Special Music Sunday, featuring the beautiful and poignant requiem by U.S. American contemporary composer K. Lee Scott with the Fairlawn Senior Choir, soloists, and chamber orchestra. But due to the COVID-19 crisis, it had to be canceled. Much of the music that Eleanor has provided us with in this morning's online service is what would have been offered at the service. Prelude, hymns, introit, and postlude. The anthems, though, are not what would have been previously programmed and are hopefully reflective of both the time and the place we find ourselves in at this moment in time, as well as the celebration of the Easter season. Your worship experience will not be complete until you've clicked on the link just be below the video on YouTube to listen. I invite you to join me in words of prayer to draw us into worship on this day in the season of Easter. O oh God, where broken hearts are made whole, where wounded souls are healed, where life is stronger than death, there the stone has been rolled away. Where the lonely become our friends, where a stranger is welcomed home, where hope is stronger than despair, there we find Jesus walking. Where the anxious find serenity, where love is stronger than hate, there Jesus is opening our eyes. The stone has been rolled away. Jesus is our companion on the journey. Christ is risen. Amen. In these days, sharing peace is one of the ways by which we stand up to fear and death and proclaim life and hope. Despite uncertainty and isolation, we have the courage to grasp hold of peace, and to pass it around. The peace of Christ be with us all. I am finding as a result of this whole pandemic experience that I read the Bible differently now. And so today we have a window into the long walk that Cleopas and his companion shared that first Easter day heading to Emmaus. It's a story that we read about in Luke. Their world had also been turned upside down. Their walk home was marked by grief and confusion. They had heard the bizarre rumor that Jesus was not dead, but they were just going home. Back to the familiar, the safe, the comfortable, back to normal. However, before the day is out, they'll be back in Jerusalem. Our reading is from Luke chapter 24. On that same day, two disciples were traveling to a village called Emmaus, about seven miles from Jerusalem. They were, walk they were talking to each other about everything that had happened. While they were discussing these things, Jesus himself arrived and joined them on their journey. But they were not able to recognize who he was. He said to them, what are you talking about as you walk along? They stopped, their faces downcast. The one named Cleopas replied, 
Are you the only visitor to Jerusalem who's unaware of the things that have taken place there over the last few days? He said to them, what things? The things about Jesus of Nazareth, because of his powerful deeds and words, he was recognized by God and all the people as a prophet. But our leaders handed him over to be sentenced to death, and they crucified him. We'd hoped that he was the one, the one who would redeem Israel. These things happened three days ago. But now some women from our group have left us stunned. They went to the tomb this morning and didn't find the body. They said they saw a vision of angels who told them he is alive. Jesus said to them, why can't you understand? How can you be so slow to believe all that the prophets said? Wasn't it necessary for the Christ to suffer these things and then enter into his glory? Then he interpreted for them the things written about himself in all the scriptures, starting with Moses and going through all the prophets. When they came to Emmaus, he acted as if he were going on ahead. But they urged him, saying, Stay with us. It's evening, and the day is almost over. So he went in to stay with them. After he took his seat at the table, he took bread, blessed it, and broke it, and gave it to them. Their eyes were opened, and they recognized him, but he disappeared. They said to each other, Weren't our hearts on fire when he spoke to us along the road, when he explained the scriptures to us? They got up and returned to Jerusalem, where they found the eleven and the others. They described what had happened on the road and how Jesus was made known to them as he broke the bread. As they were saying these things, Jesus himself stood among them and said, Peace be with you. They were terrified and afraid. They thought they were seeing a ghost. He said to them, Why are you startled? Look at my hands and my feet. It's really me. Touch me and see. A ghost doesn't have flesh and bones like I have. They were wondering and questioning in the midst of their happiness. Then he said to them, Do you have anything to eat? They gave him a piece of baked fish. Taking it, he ate it in front of them. Then he opened their minds to understand the scriptures. You know, for many of us at Fairlawn Avenue and elsewhere, Easter, Easter was the goal of much hard work and anticipation. Now it is behind us and COVID-19 is still with us. Self-isolation continues. The end is not in sight. <clears throat> the daily barrage of statistics, the numbers infected, the numbers who have died, the scramble for protective equipment for a vaccine continues. The disciples in those first post-Easter days hid behind closed doors in isolation, too. Encountering the first reports of the risen Christ with fear and disbelief, nothing had outwardly changed. As followers of Jesus, they're trying to figure out how to live with the new information that they were getting that upended every expectation of the stark reality around them. And then Jesus meets them on the way. He doesn't come to them in Jerusalem, the holy city where he had been crucified. He doesn't wait for them at home or set up a rendezvous. He meets them where they are, on the road, amid their journey, right smack in the middle of all the pain and frustration and disillusionment that threatens to crush them. Their world had been turned upside down. They had glimpsed a vision that was clear and compelling. It had all made sense. We hoped that he was the one. From his perspective, Jesus finds himself struggling to convince his disciples that he's not dead. It's a bizarre predicament to be in. 
walking into a room and having your closest friends shrink away in terror at the sight of you. Having to explain to them over and over again that you're not a ghost, a zombie, or a delusion. That you are real, alive somehow. The same yet different, approachable, trustworthy. Jesus does two things to, squell, to quell the skepticism of his followers. Things that speak to the kind of witness that he wants them and us to, be, to bear in the world. First, he shows them his hands and his feet. Now, it's easy to miss this, but consider its strangeness. We don't usually identify one another by our hands and our feet. If I'm trying to find someone in a crowd, I scan faces. I don't look at people's hands and feet. But for Jesus, this is the most revealing aspect of himself. His hands and his feet bear the unmistakable signs of crucifixion, of defeat, of vulnerability. They are not mended and manicured. The wounds are still raw and gaping. In her 1994 book, The Disabled God, toward a liberatory theology of disability. Nancy Eastland warns us not to take lightly the fact that Jesus is resurrected with his body visibly broken. In presenting his impaired body to his startled friends, she writes, the resurrected Jesus is revealed as the disabled God. His injuries, remain an essential part of his resurrected identity. What would it be like for us to follow in the footsteps of a disabled God, to lead with our scars? Jesus risked real engagement, real presence, real scars, real pain. The paradox of resurrection is that Jesus' scarred body comforted his disciples. His wounded hands and feet pull them out of disbelief and into radical, life-altering faith. The second thing that Jesus does is just as, as unlikely. He expresses hunger. Do you have anything to eat? He asks. And when they hand him a piece of broiled fish, he eats it in their presence. Such a simple act. And yet something shifts. As Jesus eats, the disciples lose enough of their fear to draw close and actually listen to what he's saying. By the end of the encounter, they are no longer frightened. They are witnesses, simply by expressing hunger, inviting hospitality, and accepting food. Jesus turns table fellowship into communion. Eating together breaks down barriers, eases awkwardness, and fosters intimacy. When the disciples fed Jesus, their eyes were opened. Death fled the room, and the resurrected Jesus came alive in them. Belief didn't come first. Food did. Scarred and hungry. This is our God. This is resurrection. This is the Word made flesh. These resurrection encounters are powerful stories of community, of believers, doubters, and strugglers gathering and breaking apart and gathering again, coming together and telling the stories of their experiences, sharing their memories of Jesus, 
his acts and his words. And then, like people of faith today, like us, shining their own light on that experience and coming to new understandings and new inspiration. However we may respond to these stories, we cannot tame them. They can't be confined by our logic and ways of seeing the world. They defy any attempt to fully understand or control them on the part of believer and skeptic alike. And you know, in our day, people want to experience the divine, the sacred, the holy. They are disenchanted, but still seeking grace and wonder, mystery, beauty. And it happens today in our lives too. When our hearts too burn within us, when we struggle with questions of meaning and can't, just can't understand what's happening around us, to us. The meaning, the pathway may be here when we sit down together and break bread and more than an intellectual understanding of our minds, we come to see with our hearts what is there among us. In the midst of our own calamity, of a global pandemic that has shaken the foundation of our sense of security and control in the world, we are trying to integrate new information and unfathomable experience into our worldview. We're anxious and uncertain about what the future may bring. And we're discovering that there are things to learn in the midst of our distress and our uncertainty and our fears. Lessons about generosity, about sharing with strangers who become unexpected sources of hope and help, about not fearing the other, but rather breaking our bread with them. Sharing medical advances, supplies and data, data, caring for one another, including neighbors we've never met, speaking out and helping out those hit hardest by the devastation, finding creative ways to nurture community and friendship and family across social distancing. These, these are all expressions of hospitality and generosity and shared commitment to the future and to hope. We are on a long, long journey. There's a deepening sense that the virus is upending so many of the things that we knew that there will not be a return to what was, that this pandemic has so disrupted our lives that we are now entering a new space that no one could have anticipated. How we live on this journey is just as important, if not more important, as getting to its end. The values we practice during the journey are what will ensure that we are ready for what happens, what things are like when we reach the end and encounter a new beginning. We need compassion with others and with ourselves on this journey. We need an awareness that deep weariness accompanies the losses that come with profound change. We can be gentle with ourselves as the rush to face new challenges adds pressures and expectations. We can be present to ourselves and to those we love, making space for experiences of anxiety in the midst of this upheaval, this unraveling, and space too for beginning to see and believe that something new will be possible. 
resurrection we are discovering is just as unsettling as crucifixion, except that it's powered by hope and fueled by love. Amen. The Farallon Church building remains closed, but ministry is happening as we adapt and work around the limitations. Our financial needs to sustain our operations through this extended period also continue, to be honest. If you are on par pre-authorized remittances, then thank you for ensuring our ability to continue Fairlawn's life and ministry. Thank you, too, for those who are mailing in their offering. For others, if you go to the website, www.fairlawnchurch.ca, on the right of the screen, you'll see an image of a green button marked Donate, and that will take you to secure online ways to support Fairlawn through this time. And that support, your support, is deeply appreciated. <coughs> Let us gather our thoughts, our hearts, our yearnings, our hopes, our fears in our prayer. Let us pray. God of new life, your life is breaking out from darkened tombs everywhere in creation. In all the new life bursting out of the ground and transforming the world around us, in each personal encounter, in each heartfelt moment of insight, your life is breaking out, O oh God, throughout our lives, in our abilities and vulnerabilities, in each breath and heartbeat, your newness of life is breaking out, O oh God, and it invites us to respond to new birth and possibility as we learn to recognize it along the way on our journey. Your life is always slipping through the cracks of the world and of our lives, sending out shoots and scattering seeds, giving birth to new promise. Yet as we walk through life, as the world journeys through unraveling and upheaval, we're overcome with the trauma and turmoil of these days. This disease is a great leveler. It leaves none of us untouched. And yet the skies do seem clearer, the air cleaner, the world and waters less littered with our mess. The earth looks more itself these days, its resilience on display. May we take courage and hope as we continue on our way together, sharing life and breathing out the joy we find to breathe in. We pray for our church, for the journey that we are on together to reimagine what it means to be called to ministry in this time and this place. May we recognize you on the way in the sharing of life with strangers, in the opening of our doors to others, that we may see the world through their eyes. May we, open-hearted, open-minded, be open to you in the life of the world that you so love. We pray for one another and for ourselves. In caring for one another, may we be untiring. In supporting one another, may we be strong. In holding one another, may we be tender. We bring to mind and hold in our hearts those for whom our concern runs deep and name them in the stillness. resurrection life, as we seek to live in your way, 
Take us from fear to confidence, from old creation to new creation. We pray in the name of Jesus, whose words and whose way fills the world with your life. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. After this service, there will be a time for conversation, coffee hour chat online uh, using Zoom video conferencing. The details for connecting are in greetings and were also included in the notice that you received this morning for this worship service. I hope you will join me and share your thoughts on the reading, on your life experience, on how things are going. It will be good to see you. Members of Governing Council will meet this week by video conference again to continue their hands-on oversight and encouragement of Fairlawn's life and ministry during this time. If you have any questions or concerns, you can share them directly by email, sending them to me, Ducharme at FairlawnAvenueUnited.ca, or to Governing Council by sending an email to GC Governing Council at FairlawnAvenueUnited.ca. Fairlawn Avenue is a community of people who are deeply committed to faithful values that make a difference in our world. Don't underestimate the impact of that in these unsettled and turbulent times. Let us go with God's blessing. Jesus came among his friends and disciples, breathing new life into them. Christ comes among us, breathing life and peace. Let this mystery be one we live. God fashions us with Christ's hands, forms us with Christ's heart, and shapes us with Christ's heart and hope. Let this resurrection be, in our lives, a blessing for the world. Go in peace and enjoy. Amen.